This is an interview with Dr. Rebecca Ford from the University of Melbourne about Ascochyta blight in chickpea. So I've been working on uh, Ascochyta in chickpeas for some years now. Um, I have uh, a previous project funded with GRDC uh, trying to understand uh, about the pathogen population, about what isolates are out there, what risks they pose to the industry, in particular to the new re released varieties. Um, is the pathogen Ascochyta rabii actually adapting and evolving to overcome, potentially overcome the new resistances that um, Christy Hobson and the National Chickpea Breeding Program are releasing. So knowing that the pathogen is not going away and that uh, it's going to be a constant threat to the industry, understanding the pathogen population itself and the structure within it. This particular project has been going for a number of years and we've received isolates from all over the country. Um, most of our isolates this season are coming from northern New South Wales because of the incidence of the disease up there and the epidemic that's occurring. We've um, also received several isolates from parts of um, Victoria. So far looking at the pathogenicity of isolates uh, from the various growing regions around Australia. We've found some isolates that appear to be quite nasty and aggressive, quite pathogenic on the uh, differential host sets, so the cultivars that we're screening under controlled environment conditions. Uh, these isolates, there's several isolates that appear to be able to complete their life cycle on the host, on the most resistant of our hosts, like Patrick, like Genesis 90 and they're actually sporulating, and the, which is putting up warning signs for us that, that potentially our, the population of isolates out there may be changing, it becoming more pathogenic um, and able to uh, reproduce on our, you know, on our best resistant cultivars, something we haven't seen in previous years. So the purpose of collecting this information about how these isolates behave is to be able to identify the highest risk isolates and those isolates are the ones that can cause the worst disease on our best resistant sources. Those isolates are then fed back through the national breeding program so that uh, the breeders can select their best resistance in the subsequent selection process. Um, so I think it's important to note that we're always going to be one season behind the pathogen. We're never going to be in front of it. But if we select isolates that are the worst from this season, at least we've got a better chance of ensuring that the, the cultivars that are released in the future are going to be as sustainable as possible for as long as possible. We're working in with the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries and Kevin Moore up there to look at the biology, the interaction of these really nasty isolates with our best resistant sources to see whether they've changed in the way that they can actually infect and colonize the plants to see whether we are actually seeing resistance breakdown or not. So without actually knowing what are the resistance genes, looking at the biology of defense to see whether these new isolates are causing a different sort of reaction on our resistance sources. Generally, I'm happy to receive isolates from anywhere around Australia, from any chickpea growing region. What I need is the exact origin, so the uh, geographic origin, the name of the cultivar that they've come from, um, and uh, that's about it, I, I think. Um, so any, happy to receive any isolates.